YouTubers and welcome to another Doctor Who action figure review. This is my first review of 2015 and what better way to celebrate it than with Big Chief Studios first Doctor commemorative edition 1-6 scale collector figure. Now William Hartnell would have celebrated his 107th birthday earlier this month and so this figure has come out right at the perfect time to celebrate the man who started it all. So let's begin by taking a look at the figure's packaging. The figure comes packaged in the standard window box with removable cover. The packaging features the familiar elements of the classic series style guide, and unlike the rest of Big Chief's recent Doctor Who figures, the foil on the front is in gold rather than silver to promote the fact that this is a special commemorative edition. The sides of the box feature various publicity images of William Hartnell, and the back of the box features an image of the prototype of the figure, as well as giving us a character biography about the first Doctor. The base of the box features the credits of the various people who worked on this figure, along with which number out of 500 this figure is. The front of the box is attached by a series of magnets down the sides. This then doubles as the console room backdrop. With the front removed, this allows us to see some publicity images of the figure down the sides of the box, as well as information on the accessories and the specifications. Upon opening the box, one of the first things you'll find is the certificate of authenticity and also the plaque. And finally, the figure and its accessories are packaged into two trays. Now this is the figure straight out of the packaging. I have removed the cloak so I can show you the details of the costume a bit easier. He has all of the standard articulation that you would expect from a 1-6 scale figure. It's just too much to go through, but it's all the standard stuff. Articulation at the head, the neck, ab crunch, shoulders, elbows, biceps, um, 360 degrees, here, there and everywhere, articulation at the wrists, at the waist, at the hips, the knees, ankles, is everywhere. So moving on to the portrait of William Hartnell, this is absolutely fantastic. The lightness is spot on. The pictures that you're seeing on the screen do not do it justice. Seeing it in hand, it is like they have shrunk Hartnell down to one six scale. When you look at his eyes, there's something of the uncanny valley going on here because it looks so human and yet, obviously, it's just a plastic figure. Grego's paint apps really bring this figure to life. All of the small details, such as the freckles around his scalp, the reddening around the eyes, and the slight blush to his cheeks, all bring this figure to life. It's absolutely amazing and definitely the best figure from Big Chief so far. There is absolutely no softening to the sculpt. All of the fine details, the crow's feet, the bags under his eyes, the lines across his forehead, they've all been captured here perfectly and vividly. The sculpt on the hair is very impressive. You can see all the fine lines and details, areas where the hair starts to curl slightly, really giving a lot of texture to the sculpt. And the paint apps here have lots of different washes, so it's not just pure white, which makes it feel far more natural. So moving down to the costume and looking at the Doctor's frock coat, this has a variety of details. We have six buttons going up either side of the jacket. We also have pockets on either side. We have the flaps here, and the pockets actually do work. There are also three buttons on the cuffs. And the back of the coat has lots of different seams, and also a split at the back. The jacket's lapels are done in a slightly different material from the rest of the jacket, making it look more like satin. Upon opening the coat, you can see the satin inside, and there is also an inside pocket, which, just like the pockets on the outside, is also usable. Moving to the waistcoat, this is very accurate to what is seen in the TV show. As you can see, the pattern is near identical to what William Hartnell wore in his early seasons. And there is also a series of six transparent buttons running up the middle. The waistcoat also features four separate pockets, all of which actually work. The back of the waistcoat is made of a nice satin material, very similar to what Hartner wore, and we even have smaller details such as the strap and the buckle at the bottom. The tailoring of the wingtip shirt is also very good. You can open the cuffs of the shirt via the small popper, and the wingtipped collar hangs very realistically. The doctor's necktie is made of a satin-like blue material, which is just tied around his neck. And just like the waistcoat, the shirt also has a series of clear buttons running through the middle. Opening the waistcoat allows us to get a better look at the shirt inside. It's really quite interesting because it only goes so far and then it sort of cuts off towards the bottom. Now I can only imagine that this is how the actual Edwardian shirt would have been tailored. And you can see that the figure also has braces holding up his trousers. 
The trousers are also very nicely done. They hang very much in the same way as the trousers Hartnell wore. Slightly baggy because of the nature of the type of trousers. And the print is very well done. You have that dark checkered print with two shades of grey print within. The trousers have working pockets on both sides, as well as a working back pocket complete with button. And at the back of the trousers you can see that there is a strap and a buckle as well as the top of the braces. And then moving down to the shoes, these are really nicely done. At the front, the tip is just a slightly different colour, it's more of a grey rather than black like the rest of the shoe. And then you have the leather covers over the top. And you can see there are various buttons painted with a black gloss that go up the sides. All of the details on the shoes are very impressive, all of the little creases, the dark wash to the brown leather gives it a very realistic look. And the soles of the shoes have scuffs painted on the bottom just to make it look like the Doctor's actually been walking around in them. So those are the main parts of the costume covered. However, this figure also comes with a few other costume pieces. First off, let's take a look at the cloak. So the figure actually comes packaged wearing this cloak. The outside is made of a soft satin-like material, but then the inside is made of another sort of satin-like material, even more so. Uh, so that's very nice. You've got the two different textures on the inside and on the outside. You also have the collar, which is made of this faux velvet material, just like Hartnell's cloak. And then we have some very small details in the form of the golden chain with the lion head clasps on either side. These are very nicely sculpted. I mean, you can quite clearly see what they're supposed to be. They look like snarling lions. Very nice indeed. Very cool. Um, this isn't unhookable. So the way in which you put this on the figure is you must remove the head of the figure first and then hang this over the top and then put the head back on. And then we have the Doctor looking rather dashing in his cloak. There is no wire in the cloak so it's not like you compose it to make it look like it's blowing out into the wind or anything, which I'm not bothered about myself. I'm much happier with it just hanging like it would naturally. And he also has some extra bits to go with this. Firstly, we have the scarf. Now this actually does have a wire frame in it, so you can bend this around to make it look like it's blowing in the wind. This is very nicely done. If you've got the Tom Baker figure, you'll know the sort of thing. The pattern has been printed onto the fabric. It's a dark grey, a light grey, and there seems to be some red and green and possibly white in there. Very nice. If you've seen an adventure in space and time, then you'll know what to expect because that is really the only colour images we have of the First Doctor's scarf. The actual images from an unearthed child are all in black and white, sadly. And the end of the scarf has tassels. Again, these also feature the flecks of colour, so you may not be able to see it on camera, but there are traces of the grey and the red in there and the other colours as well. And then that can be hung around his neck like so. Now, the scarf is quite wide and it is quite long. Um, at first I thought actually this is going to be a bit too wide and too long but once you put it on the figure it actually isn't. What I would advise to get it to fit around his neck better so it's not actually wrapping around his head entirely I just folded the scarf down the middle and then I looped it around his neck. But as you can see it just hangs like so. You know you can just bend it around to make it look however you want it to be. And finally we have his woolly astrakhan hat. This is done in a piece of fabric which then has white or greyish fibres through it to give it that same colour and appearance as the one Hartnell wore. So it is only very thin, it's not thick or anything which is good because we need it to fit on the figure's head and look in scale. And that just slips on his head like so. And that completes the look of how we meet the Doctor in the very first episode of Doctor Who. Now the figure comes with eight different interchangeable hands. Just like the figure's head, the detail on the hands is very good. You can see all of the fine skin details in the sculpt, the veins and the nails, all of which are highlighted by Grego's paint apps, which, just like the first Doctor's head, have the same signs of freckles and ageing on the skin. All of the right hands feature a ring with a blue stone on his middle finger. This ring wasn't merely a decorative object, but also an alternative way to open the TARDIS doors. And again we have the same impressive sculpting and paint applications on the left hand, all of which feature a silver ring on his little finger. And although it may not be clear on camera, the veins on the hands have even been painted blue, very, very lightly. And just like with all of Big Chief's figures, the hands are very easy to swap. They pop off very easily. You don't even have to remove the ball joint peg from the wrist socket. The hands are made of a very soft rubber, which makes swapping the hands over very easy. 
Other accessories include the Doctor's pocket watch, complete with black ribbon, and it even features the design of a Huntsman pocket watch on the front. And the paint applications here aren't just solid gold, there's lots of different washes there, so areas look lighter and darker to make it look more realistic. And then the pocket watch can be housed inside his waistcoat pocket, just like in the TV show. Other accessories include the Doctor's walking stick, which he acquires in the serial Marco Polo. This has been beautifully realised, it's a very impressive sculpt and has some amazing paint applications to it. Nearing the bottom of the stick you can see all the lumps and bumps of the wood, towards the top you have the spiral effect, and then at the end you have the silver adjoining the ivory handle. The Doctor's pipe, briefly seen in episode 2 of An Unearthly Child, is also featured. Again this features an impressive sculpt which has been brought to life with Grego's paint apps. All of the fine details have been perfectly captured, even down to the small hinge on the side. The terranium core of the Daleks Time Destructor, as featured in the missing serial The Daleks Master Plan, also comes with the figure. Again, the details here are impressive, down to the hinge and rivets along the side, to the metal clasp on the other side. The figure also features a pair of thin spectacles that can be placed on the Doctor's head. And he also comes with his monocle, which is on a black ribbon, which can be hung over the figure's neck. And lastly, he comes with four of the micro-circuit keys, as featured in the Keys of Marinus. These are very teeny tiny, but incredibly detailed. These are very teeny tiny, but incredibly detailed. They're moulded in a transparent plastic, but each features the circuit board painted on it. In addition to this, the figure also comes with spare buttons and spare foot and hand pegs. The figure also comes with this hexagonal display stand, which features a light-up display of the number one in Gallifreyan text. And here is a better look at the Certificate of Authenticity and the number plaque. And each figure comes with this set of beautiful photo prints signed by Carol Ann Ford and William Russell. And finally, here is a better look at the console room backdrop. And here is the First Doctor stood alongside Big Chief's Fourth Doctor figure. As you can see, Hartnell is quite shorter than Tom Baker, which is very accurate. Hartnell was not a tall man, and I think they look excellent together. So, final thoughts. This is an absolutely amazing figure. The amount of extra costume pieces really make for a brilliant figure. The likeness of Hartnell is incredible, and so much care has been taken with each of the costume pieces and all of the various accessories. The added backdrop of the TARDIS and the signatures of Carol Ann Ford and William Russell, the first Doctor's very first companions, makes this figure very special indeed. I highly recommend this figure to any Doctor Who fan. This is the perfect way to celebrate 50 years of Doctor Who with the very first Doctor, the man who started it all, William Hartnell. So thank you for watching this review guys, I hope you enjoyed it, and please stay tuned for more Doctor Who action figure reviews coming soon. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you again.